Hello, welcome to Arcade Couch, the best place to chew with friends to get your game goodness each and every Monday. My name's Dylan Blight. Join me on the couch this week. Returning, Ashley Hobby. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here again. You know, uh, I know how much my non-appearance threw you guys off last week, uh, and you never recovered from from that start. So I'm here so to set you, things right. Are you saying last week's episode was terrible? Is that what you're suggesting? No, you just you know you're just thrown. You know, you're a little bit off. You know, below par. You know. Below par, he says. You know, you're just, oh, you know, you oh, were like, oh, okay. struggling, you know. You're Jeez. like re- regurgitating the same stuff from the week before, you know. Talking about packs, it's been a whole week since packs. <laughs> also here, Kim Raj. <laughs> Hello, it's your apparently sub below par friendly neighborhood couch caster. Um, oh, how I mean, do- we, we didn't really <laughs> reiterate the same stuff because Kieran no, wasn't. Exactly. Nah, I should have moved on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know? And you're like, oh, Fuck Activision hell. Blizzard, oh, that's all done, you know? Only the biggest Shit. deal in the world. It's like an afterthought, you know? It is an afterthought. Bringing, about, bringing down the downfall of video games everywhere, you know? <laughs> I really felt like he'd come back and change, man, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just, he's just come back with a freaking bottle of gasoline to... Pour on everything and light on fire. The yeah. couch is in a smolder. Yep. We're going to be like um, arcade armchairs soon. He's going to separate us <laughs> into like three separate armchairs. It's going to be distance. <laughs> Do you play any uh, video games while you're off Ash or no? A lot of Pokemon Snap. Oh, Marvel Snap. <laughs> Pokemon Snap. All right. Yeah, Pokemon that would have been surprising. Up, yeah. Classic. The OG. A lot of Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap, yeah. Just had your, uh, your old mobile phone. Yeah, pretty much. You took your laptop. You didn't play anything on your laptop. No, I took I took my tablet. Uh, mm. No, I didn't tablet. really play anything, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. All yeah. right. Well, uh, I won't ask you about if you had any other thoughts about packs in your time. <laughs> way we, uh, we, we don't want to regurgitate. We don't want to. No, we don't want to cover it all. Don't want to go. Again. Check out TikTok. Check out explosion.com. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on uh, South by Southwest or I uh, I am or the million other things that apparently seems to be going on, going on forever? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it I started last weekend and it's still weekend. going. Yeah, you know, man. Some people Which I had get a because massive it's a, three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's a, obviously based on the the US event, so which. It's like a long festival, I want to say, like a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think South by Southwest um, is two or three weeks in Austin normally. Yeah. yeah. I would have loved to have done South by Southwest, and, and I am, but the idea of doing all of these things off the back of packs is just fucking... Well, it turns out, I thought there were back-to-back weekends, but it turns out we, you probably could have like taken a weekend break in between. But even a weekend God. break in between mm. shit. Still, like, in all honesty, I'd rather, I'd rather have done it back-to-back, because at least for work and stuff, you could just book... A mm. chunk off. You could book the two weeks off. Like I'd already booked two weeks off, so you could just go from Melbourne to Sydney and carry on mm. instead of, yeah. you know, not do that. I mean, South so. by Southwest seems like it's been a success. The the funny thing about South by Southwest, the, f- the first one, this is the first one in Australia. Yes, right? yeah. the first one. Yes, yeah. right. The first one in Australia. The funniest thing to me about that is that yeah, just and I tweeted about it because I'd I'd see people tweet like from the gaming side of it, and then people tweeting about like the movie side, and like I never see this like cross convention cross sort of event yeah. uh, pollination between the different types of people I follow on Twitter. Like you know, people are tweeting there at these um movie premieres and whatever else at South by Southwest, and then people tweeting about like going to games, like talks and play games. And I was like, it's so funny to watch. Um, Anyway, apparently it was a success. Looks like it was a success. Um, Spider-Man had to come help uh, save uh, an incident there in Sydney, I saw. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. So. yeah. Save, lucky that save didn't, some pedestrians, yeah. Yeah, lucky that didn't d- deter the event or IM yeah. or anything Disaster like that. Disaster averted. Disaster averted, yeah, 100%. So. Uh, all right, today on the show, a bunch of video games. Basically, I don't think I've put any news topics in the show, did I? No. Pretty sure there's no news um, this week that isn't fine, related to the stuff we've been talking about. Yeah, so we're obviously going to be talking about Spider-Man, uh, Super Mario Bros. Uh, teased it last week, get Kieran Sorts on Assassin's Creed Mirage, because he said he was playing a bunch of that. Detective Pikachu returns, I've finished now as well. Um, and then a couple of uh, reviews by uh, Will to f- uh, quickly read over and stuff. Let's start with the biggest game of last week. Sorry, Mario. Ooh, but just, just throwing the, the gauntlet down. <laughs> <Yeah. Just stay laughs> 
yeah. one of them um, had one of them had a truck being flipped over in Sydney. The other one, yeah, did and so. rented out the fucking dome in Las Vegas. So. Yeah, yeah, massive. Um, Spider Man Two, Ash, for your thoughts on it, read us through the quality critics. Quality critics. Uh, I didn't actually write this one, but. Uh... <laughs> That's fine. I, I feel like you're in charge you get, of this. It was uh, a, like a 9.5 out of 10 across the, the uh, several critics. Uh, what do we say? One of the biggest games of 2023 is undoubtedly Marvel Spider-Man 2. Whether you're looking to find out how Venom get involved with the sequel with Peter, uh, you're more excited to play as Miles and continue his adventures. You're looking to see if there are enough puzzles in the sequel. There are plenty of reasons to get excited about its release. In the sequel to both Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales developer Insomniac returns to continue the adventures of both web slingers this time they're dealing with both the symbiote Venom and the introduction of Lizard and Craven the Hunter and Craven has turned New York into his own personal hunting grounds for superpower beings although most of the quality critics had nearly nothing negative to say about Marvel Spider-Man 2 there were a couple of mentions of bugs and technical issues that may or may not be patched before the public release later this week some critics spoke about the lack of side content or interesting side content others had no issue with the amount and the type of additional content in the game. Everyone had nothing but praise for the game's refined combat and the story, alongside many mentions about how great and fast the fast travel and noob websuit is for flying around New York City. Yep. 9.5. Quality critic score. Yep. Um, how much you played, Ash? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I want to say, it? like, no. 10 hours, maybe? Yeah. Off the top of my head? Karen? Yes, um, I'd be more than that. I'd be closer to the 20, probably. Fair. Yeah. All right, let's go. I'm going to go with you first, then, Ash, because I gave you the review code. So, yes. That's the official face of Explosion <laughs> Network for this one. Uh, what is, well, how are you feeling about Spider Man 2? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, it's uh, the first game and Miles Morales, but more. <laughs> and together, um, I'm really enjoying the story so far. I'm really enjoying how they integrated. Well, it's it's very much a retelling of the the Craven's Last Hunt storyline for the most part, but there's also this Venom element thrown in on top. I love the introduction of Harry and how he's been kind of been integrated. Um, yeah, just the balancing of both sides of Peter and Miles is being done very well. Um, yeah, just a lot of cool elements. But, you know, the it, the... The thing everybody's going to love about this game is like the traversal around the world, which have was amazing in Spider Man, amazing in Miles Morales. It's like they've taken it up another level here with the introduction of the web suit. It's like, and with the power of the PS5, it's like so fast to get around. I think as someone pointed out, it's like, oh, this game, like it's it's about the same length as the first one, and it's like even though there's all of this additional content, it take, still takes the same amount of time to finish the game. That's because you can get to the other end of the city like twice as fast as you could in the previous game. So you're doing less of the traversal and more of the actual like combat and fighting and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it is really, really fun so far. Um, there's a couple of interesting changes that I've made. I think I've seen some people complain about some of the removal of the gadgets and that kind of stuff um, that were like pick, picks people preferred and that kind of stuff. Interesting thing for me is the suits. Like in the first in the first game, like there was kind of a reason to get the suits outside of just com- cosmetic reasons. Like there was actual power ups and stuff attached to that. In this, there's like nothing. So like I haven't really bought any suits. I'm just saving up at all the <laughs> use all the points to like uh, upgrade other stuff. You know, because this is the Marvel, the Insomniac Spider Man. Why do I want to wear you another can, suit? You can play, through the playthrough. It depends how you're playing, but I guess I've had enough scrap and enough of the city tokens because the further you get into the game, the less usage the city tokens get. Mm. The city tokens just become just for the suits. So I just unlock yeah. them as I, I level. I get the suit thing because I, I don't like using DLC costumes in any game until after I finish the campaign. Mm. My rule has been if I'm doing side content, I will put on different... <laughs> outfits while I'm doing side content as soon as I'm back into like the main story one it's like which I think it's an it's interesting it's very weird that they're obviously the black suit plays a role in this game yeah so at the point and you can now, like choose not to wear the black suit for the black suit stuff yeah so I'm at the point now where I can't change Pete like for my own mental canon I guess I can't change Peter's costume because he's only wearing that suit 
Yeah. Because I think it would be really fucking dumb to start wearing the other suits. I get it where you can, because to lock off that side of the game, maybe people would complain about it. But um, for canon reasons, it definitely makes sense to to stick with that suit. Or there is one other suit that I've been very tempted by to swap into, because I think it's appropriate. Um, but I haven't done that yet. But yeah, it's it's great. Karen? Uh yeah, I've loved it. So I'm I don't know I, I must be close to twenty hours. My I know in levels I'm level forty. Um so I've done a lot I've been doing a lot of the side content. Um I think there's a number of the side missions I've already done all the air all the locations for across the map. Um I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. Traversal is a, is very fun. Um I've found definitely had bugs and my game has crashed a number of times. Um, there is a number of sections where you use a bicycle in this game. And <laughs> every time I've used a bicycle, I've ended up having to restart the mission at some point because the bicycle has sunk into the map and I've gotten stuck, uh, which I've got multiple very funny looking screenshots of on my PlayStation app. Um, I'm I'm loving it. I think the game... At least the way I'm playing it, the game makes you feel powerful pretty quickly. Um, the game never makes you kind of relearn a lot of the stuff you learned in the the first game. Like you can start off knowing how to throw rockets back at people. You know a lot of the the skill tree, other than the gadgets, a lot of that skill tree you just already have when you start. So it's not you'd never feel made to feel like you need to relearn anything or retread any steps from the first game. There's a couple probably here and there. The opening mission is fantastic. For like the opening mission is Getting insane. you back up to speed, yeah. Yes. Um, it's very funny. I've been flicking through um, like YouTube content for people playing through that first mission today just while I've been either eating mm. or doing something else. And it's funny because you get to see who hasn't played Spider-Man in a while because their swinging is so fucking janky at first. <laughs> um, it's It's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if I'm like, there's been some interesting changes to, I guess, one of the elements of this story that I think I'm not sure if I dig or I'm waiting for it to go full circle of everything to kind of really say if I like it. Um, I think it's, it's an interesting, um, I, I echo what I've heard a lot. I really love playing as Miles for whatever reason. I find Miles just everything about his character and his side stuff a lot more interesting than I do Peter's stuff. Um, I think there is, there are definitely there are side missions and side quests that are just for one character or the other. Mm-hmm. I've never really randomly swapped between the characters. I've always swapped only when the story tells me I need to jump over to the other person and then I'll keep, and then I'll do all the side quests that they've got at the time. <laughs> um, I'm unlocking all the costumes. I've been messing around with costumes. Some of the side missions, there is one particular side mission that hit me for fucking six. And I was, and this was when I was like, oh, I've been playing the main story. This shit's, you know, I'm going to go and do some of the side quests, have fun, put on some more goofier costumes. One of them just destroyed me, like, like, as in, like, emotionally. I felt like shit after it because I was like, what the fuck? Um, I think can't be, can't believe I was wearing a cape for that. Thing. <laughs> no, it kind of was, right? Like, it kind of was. I was wearing the, I think, the pre order bonus costume. Um, but it's more Spider Man. I think it's, it's definitely Insomniac knows what they're doing at this point. I've used the, fu- I love it's funny. It's been funny to me. I thought about it today. Everybody's raving about the fast travel system. I literally used it once. I've used it once the entire time yeah. because I'm having that much fun just floating around. And the later you get into the game, especially with the the suit upgrades you get, um, that gets quicker. Everything gets quicker with your traversal. Um, so, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I think the Craven is interesting. I'm liking the Craven storyline. Um, the... Something that I never expected was how the dynamic of Peter and Harry was going to affect the dynamic of Miles and Peter. And I found that is kind of the most interesting thing for this whole. And it kind of 
puts it back in perspective how much of an age difference there is between Peter and Miles again and and the point in Miles' life. Um, mm. I think there's a lot more because of, I think because of Miles Morales and the story of that game, Miles just feels like a more grounded character when it comes to the community and the world that you're in. In terms of like, he feels important. And even the, when he's not Spider-Man, he is just Miles Morales. There's more weight to the things he's doing. There's more um, importance and there's throwbacks to characters and you meet people and you it's easy mm. to remember who they were the last time you saw them and what was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. I don't know whether that's because we've seen all of Miles' journey, like compared to Peter where we've jumped in like halfway through his but, career. I think it's because they took the time in Miles Morales to build up Peter, uh, build up Miles and build up his community and the cast of characters around him. Whereas mm, that's true. a lot With of the Spider-Man, cast- they had the core cast of characters and they killed off a bunch. Yeah, right? <laughs> like they took away like everybody who was maybe a core character other than one or two in the, the first game. He's like MJ. <laughs> is, is MJ's really the, his only main carryover in this one. Um it, whereas Miles is still well, deep. that's just that's just the down the major downside of having one of the major confiance and of a character be a bad guy like yeah so yeah you know Doc Ock yeah. he spent so much time with Peter but it's even like him, but... it's not even and like another Doc, one <laughs> it's not even Shout like... to the city never sleeps players mm. which is funny right I the DLCs are actually kind of important in this game. Mm-hmm. Because has that come up? Has, has that come yes, up? That, yep. that massively comes up heaps. Okay. That, like, that's like I, that's one of the biggest questions I had. Like, like, like the, it is within maybe the first within the first ten hours of the game, everything from those DLCs comes up in mm-hmm. one form or another, which is and mm-hmm. it's fucking interesting. Like the world, it's not just act. It doesn't. It never acts like those were just events that kind of happened. Side stories. No, they were really important, and they affected some. Makes characters. me wonder because I, sh- I assume most people who played Spider Man would have played Miles Morales, or the majority, mm-hmm. like at least like. 80, but that's the 90%. thing. Those but the city that never sleeps. I didn't play. I only played part of the Black Cat DLC. I never played the rest of the DLCs for the original. No, Spider-Man. that's why it was such a. We talked about it so much on Plat. Like about how it's such a huge like twist at the end of that third episode. That what's that character's name? It's not a spoiler at the stage. Like Yuri, Yuri, Yuri like yeah. Yuri in that third DLC just like fucking turns full heel, and we're like, we're like, okay, <laughs> no one's gonna play this, <laughs> but sure, yeah, yeah. No, and it, but I think you could, you know, it gives you, you enough context, right? DLC. It gives, it you, gives enough, you enough context you enough. and it explains enough for you to understand what's gone on here and what's happened. Um, yep. and also I think it does approach the villains in a really interesting way from the last game and from those DLCs um, it yeah it very much approaches them and the what they've, they're doing now very interestingly in a couple different ways and kind of gives you a lot to, to process and think about it's not just you know, in the cartoons or in the comic books where a villain was caught and then randomly, like, a couple episodes or a couple, like, an arc or two later, that, that villain's back out, back at it again. And you're just like, what the fuck? What is that with the criminal justice system of the MCU, of the Marvel universes, you know? Um, yeah, no, I, I really like the the depth and what there is in the world to do. And, yeah, the set pieces so far have been great and interesting and they even, and I heard some people complain about this, they even improved one of the sections or one of the gameplay mechanics I hated the most in Spider-Man 1 wow. is vastly improved here in Spider-Man 2. Stealth sections? Yeah. There has been one yeah. major one that you don't feel completely useless in doing anymore, so it's good. <laughs> Though they have been replaced by another form of stealth mission that I got twice in very quick concession in the main story that I was not a fan of. Where you just... Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, like, stuff with, like, the spider bots. With, like, oh, the, okay. There's, I there's, two, there's two... I thought there was just two very back-to-back in the same, and I was like, oh, okay. This I mean, with- maybe, yeah. I didn't have the back-to-back, so it's probably just... Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, but, 
Yeah. So Dylan, you haven't played Spider-Man at all yet? No. Nah, think about Silent Night. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that first, you know, everybody's releasing the first hour. It's a great first hour. <laughs> it's an amazing first hour. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's a great setup for the the game. I think it's so. just, it is showing, like, uh, this is, it's really funny that part of PlayStation, like, I've been thinking about this in Spider Man because Spider Man 2 leverages the DualSense controller really fucking well. Like, yes. it does it so goddamn well. But it just makes it amusing that th- this leveraging of the DualSense controller is only ever going to be done for games that are specifically made for the PlayStation. I mean, it's not PlayStation's fault that. It's not, but yeah. it is, no, but it kind of is, right? Because, like, it's not PlayStation's fault, but what third party developer is going to put effort into the dual sense when it's only going to be mar- used for the PlayStation market? It's never going to get touched by the Xbox market or PC. Yeah, but how's that, how's that PlayStation's fault? <sighs> not fault is probably <laughs> just, no, no. It's just is, a. Yeah, there's no one at fault. It's just the way it is. It's not fault. It's just the way it is. Is it such a big part? And also, of the you console? can't. You can't like. That feel just bad makes uh, exclusives even more important. It's not. It's, like, it's not a feel bad. It's no, not no, like Spider Man's on Xbox and it's a poor experience. No, 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 like no, no. no, no. Yeah. But that's 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 not what I'm saying at all. PC, it's just going to be shit. It, <laughs> it's though. it's that's true. <laughs> fucking up. It's not that though. It is <laughs> where I find I just find it interesting that like. Because of this whole aspect of their hardware and infrastructure, it pushes their exclusives to feel that bit more premium. You know, it pushes it. Mm. Whether I should be paying fucking one hundred and twenty-five dollars on a fucking digital copy is another co- topic. But it's. I, mean, I brought the collector's edition. Didn't even come with a disc, so. <laughs> That's fine. I'd be okay with you got that. Your, your, you're your buying, it you're buying it for the nineteen inches of venom, baby. You're buying it for nineteen inches. But where are you putting it? It barely fit on my fucking shelf <laughs> that I have. Like, <laughs> so just the fact you took a just pause after in. you took a pause <laughs> after it barely fit was uh, uh, something else. <laughs> if you want to see pictures of nineteen inches of venom, post on social media. You did. Yeah. I was going to ask which one of you guys got that. NSFW yeah. post, you know. So yeah, yeah. Um, keen to jump in, obviously. Um, unsurprisingly, Spider Man's good. Like, I don't know. It is. This is, it it's is. one of those funniest things. Like, let's talk about Spider Man, guys. Is, isn't some of the X Marvel Spider Man 2 good? Yes, it's great. Who the fucking thought? I, I feel <laughs> like it's always the same conversation as God of War into God of War 2, where you're just like, yeah, yeah it's more yeah. of the greatness of it's, the it's first great. one, you know? I it's, mean, it's, yeah. Of course, there's like several bugs in that kind of stuff. Like, I've had audio drop out of sync. I've had one of the flying drone things get stuck in a wall, so I couldn't finish the the crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, probably, it's probably best the crime couldn't be finished. You know I mean? no, 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 I couldn't fight. You like, couldn't finish. You couldn't crime. stop the crime. You couldn't stop it. I couldn't stop the crime because it was stuck in a wall. And my favorite was uh, for some reason Miles, like he's got obviously got electricity powers. Like he would just be like have sparks all all over him, yeah, like not? for a long period of time. And then, but then it would switch to another character, and they were also just all in sparks all over them the entire it's time. Contagious. Which kind yeah. of yeah. You know, which kind of ruined the moment, but you know, still fun. Hmm. I think everything um, you're saying is part of the reason IGN gave it. And there's so (laughs) many, so many cool Easter eggs all over the world. There is, especially when I've done all the cap, like the photograph, the photography. There's some really great photography stuff throughout it that you take pictures of. Um, One that's being massively talked about, I guess, in social media circles. Um, But Greg Miller and yeah, Greg Miller and Miles, the kind of funny Easter egg that's in there. Um, Did you say Greg Miller? I don't know what you what. And Greg what Miller and about? fucking uh, sorry, sorry, he may I as think well. He means Miles. shirtless Spider Man and sh- shirtless, shirtless Miles Morales. Miles Morales. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing, the only bug that is making the game feel frustrating for me is it the spider? N- no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's an arachnid. Jesus Christ. Okay, sorry. Um, no, it's the the detection on any time it asks you to p- use to press triangle on something to use something. It is very finicky with some of yeah. the items in the game the right of where you need to be stuff, yeah. stood for it to show the button prompt. 
So that is the only that is the only bug or kind of janky thing other than the bikes running into the ground that I'm annoyed with or frustrated with at times. Yeah. All right. Also, Let's if you on. speed yep. through all the museum and the like uh Coney Island stuff, you're a monster. Well, that I will say right, the effort they put into the museum section is a um, like is is amazing. Like Yep. They that is I think that's that's something that should be talked about and I think they should definitely be in discussions for several particular awards this year at the game awards. Best because museum in a video game. <laughs> it kind of is, or I guess it, it's like <laughs> it's based on the matter of what the museum is about that I think is so. But it, even like the lab and stuff and all those different things you can explore. Yes, I think yeah, yeah it's all fantastic. Yeah, but yes, it shouldn't be skipped. Explore no. everything. So by yeah, skip, do you just mean people rushing through it, or actually, uh, yeah, you I just so, run yeah. through it without looking it's all at the exhibit stuff? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. There's lots of you can go talk to people and go look at exhibits and stuff and. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Ash. Yes. Can you hit us with the quality critic score for Assassin's Creed Mirage, which came out while PAX was on? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the majority of quality critics thoroughly enjoyed this scaled back entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise, with many hoping that this is the direction it takes going forward. The critics praise the more focused story, the beautiful recreation of Baghdad, and the stealth and parkour mechanics. Many did point out that the non-stealth combat was not as good as the other entries, possibly by design to dissuade players from trying to fight their way through every situation. Uh, that got a eight out of ten from the eight critics. Eight out of ten quality critic score. Kieran, have you finished this now? Yeah, no, I finished it last week. Like, well, last I haven't platinumed it. Is was where I was at. Oh, that was not come back to it. Yeah, I just haven't platinumed it. Um, yeah, runtime of nineteen hours and fifty-two minutes. I think it was on top of my head. Um, nice. It's it, yeah okay. It makes me laugh, right? The the comment about the story being more focused in this one, um, not only I guess refers to the runtime, but there's been this comment about Assassin's Creed for well, maybe it feels a very long time where people are like, I want a game that has next to nothing of the modern day stuff in it. I just want the historical story. Th- this is that game, other than one line in the start. And uh, a couple bits and pieces towards the end of the game. This is just a, there is no modern day stuff in this. Um, This is used, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, this is used as a a filler story or a backstory for a character in the modern day storyline as it's proceeding in Assassin's Creed. Um, But story wise, this is all, yeah, 100%. There's no dumping out of the animus into a modern day section. It's just a hundred percent Basim, a hundred percent of the time. Um, it's 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 a it's a good game. It's a good game. I had fun with it. Um, I enjoyed my nineteen hours with it. It was something good to to kind of do as like as um something to play while I was had some time off after packs. Um, the stealth feels good. the The game itself plays well. It looks pretty, but at the same time. I hope this game is just a a look back at where Assassin's Creed came from because if you honestly, if you took out Basim and you took out the story of it and just implanted the story of Assassin's Creed 1 and put Altair in, this game is a remake of Assassin's Creed 1. It is very similar in terms of the basic bare bones of the game, in terms of going to a different area, getting a contract on a character, looking for information on that character, doing the assassination. And that is the basic kind of roadmap for the game as it goes through and plays throughout. I hope this is what this is because playing this game just makes, really just made me go, well, fuck. Other than, you know, what we've had in the last five, six years of the open world RPG version of Assassin's Creed. And it's bare bones. Assassin's Creed has not changed very much throughout its 15 year lifespan. Um to the point where uh, there was climbing animations and items that are used for climbing throughout this game. I look at and go, this was introduced during Assassin's Creed 2. And it's still here. Assassin's Creed 2 was 2008 or 9, maybe 10 that period 
And we're now 2023 and the game's climbing animations still look the same. And sure that, you know, in many elements, sure that could be, well, that the climbing's just that good. But I feel like when you have games like Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom, where Link can just climb up anything, it just makes the Assassin's Creed climbing just and traversal in general just feel dated. Just feel like it, it, it is the old stuff. I hope this game is a, hey, look at back at what Assassin's Creed was. That's great. Now let's look forward to what Assassin's Creed is going to be as we proceed forward. Um, I hope they put the time and effort into building out that game in terms of um, the base engine and the, the systems that are involved in playing it. Uh, because, it, yeah, it's very much at the point where it's like, yeah, there's not been that much bare bones change now for 10 years, 10, 12 years in Assassin's Creed. Um, the, at the same time, it's still great in terms of the assassinations, the stealth gameplay. I'm glad his stealth gameplay came back in in much more fashion. Like the, the, It was a more important part of it. Um, by the end of it, you do feel like a tricked out assassin and you have a whole bunch of it and you can like bullet time do four assassinations at once and kind of drop four people really easily as um basim kind of teleports around um but yeah no i had a lot of fun the clay tables are fun the world's really good to explore um yeah it's it's a great place for assassin's creed to be in i just hope they don't look at this and go okay we need to do this for the next one more just look at it as this was a great homage to what's been done let's try and refresh assassin's creed from the ground up this next time the the next one is presumably the assassin's creed infinity or infinite or whatever it's called which is apparently just going to be the forever assassin's creed game is it Yep. Who knows at this point? It's I don't a, know because they, they got like the, six projects in the works. I thought mm. the up until recently, I thought the China game was going to be the next thing, but then I got told that's a mobile game. That and that's yeah, a mobile, really yeah. That, I mean, that's probably will be next because it's that. Yeah, but that makes me sad because it's like what they've now left China to a PSP slash PS Vita game, and. Well, it was brought to the other consoles and like the arcade digital only. And then now it's a mobile game as well. That makes me sad. So I guess the Coven one was the next that I think is Salem Witch Trials um, was what was seemed to be suggested in the previews of the last when uh, um, uh, It's confusing because the pitch for Infinity or Infinite or whatever is basically that it's um it's like it's the hub of all future games, whatever that means. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, no, I just went to Wikipedia and it says Assassin's Creed Infinity following another round of sexual misconduct allegations and internal investigations <laughs> oh, across Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Montreal and Quebec Studios merged, yeah. whatever. So, <laughs> what an introduction to that. But yeah, uh, Codename Red is theoretically the next one, which is the feudal Japan one. And then there's Hexy, which is the which Salem Witch one. one. Yeah. Yeah, but China mobile. Yes, Jade. Jade. Shock. Rip. We assume that's next because they had a gameplay trailer at Gamescom this year. So They did, yeah. But that doesn't count, is it? And closed beta. Real game. Anyway, cool. Sounds good. <laughs> um, I'm keen to never find time to play Assassin's Creed. Um, no, I understand. But, but it sounds good. <laughs> I like old school Assassin's Creed. That was good fun. Um, the, well, I think also for the climbing, it sounds like you're like so in the new open world ones, you can climb up pretty much anything. Like they just like took so you off can the climb puzzling. up anything. I guess you can climb up anything, but it's like just everything but, has the handholds and everything. If that yeah, sense. well, like, I th- I think for this one that because they brought back the stealth, they wanted to bring back the. It was supposed to be the. It's supposed to be like a puzzle, like a mini puzzle, like you know the cl- the climbing's like a puzzle. Just got to figure out where to go. No, no. well that's no. that was the idea in the originals. Nope. nope, the climbing. Yeah, in the originals, but this feels like it's like the originals, but 
everything is climb like but easier like you just go to any building and just climb up it or i okay this is the main way one of the easy ways to get up it has been the same since fucking assassin's creed i think even one had these is the the step crates that have a white cloth draped over them yeah that is, is st- yeah where you run up them and i, I don't i'm just a bit overseeing them I don't know. Like it just feels, <laughs> maybe maybe I'm being over like overcritical of it, but it's just like I just feel like it's just give me something different to run up, you know? Stop, stop with these fucking stop reusing the same shit that's been in the game for dec for a decade, please. I mean, yeah, something's ain't broke too. Ha, you know something what? Learn to cook, cook, learn to cook one meal and eat that same meal for yep. every meal. Two minutes. Do you change up your walk animation every... (laughs) All right, uh, I've posted my review for Detective Pikachu Returns, finished that this past week, Uh, started it during PAX, as I mentioned last week, Uh, gave the game a seven and a half. Uh, said, I had a fantastic time with Detective Pikachu Returns with more than a couple of jokes and moments had me laugh or smile at the screen. I would have often wished I'd been playing with someone else in the room with me as I wanted to point out silly little comments. Uh, jokes, comments from Pikachu or odd things that other Pokemon in the game were doing. He's got some issues, but I never once wanted to stop playing. Now, excuse me while I make a coffee. Coffee? How much coffee did you drink? Please. Oh, I had so much coffee. Go drink all the coffee. Yeah, take a chair. Come <laughs> take the Pikachu. You need a coffee, man. I was, I was like, right, I had to take Detective Pikachu. I'm like, what the fuck is my review tagline for this? Ah, get this detective a coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's easy peasy. Um, yeah, so it's Detective Pikachu. It's uh, it's obviously here's the thing for this game. As I like, it is a kids game, but I think my my one of my biggest complaints about this, I guess, is that it's weird because there's a there is voice acting and like they have the cinematic cutscenes where obviously Pikachu will be talking and yelling about coffee and you know solving crime and stuff like that but then a lot of the game is text so and the game is fairly easy it's you know like and again I don't really f- think this is a negative because again it's a kids game but it's like it's sort of on that that edge of being maybe a little bit too easy for a game where you have to be old enough to hold an attention span to also click through and read the amount of text that's in the game if that you know, if that makes sense, it's sort of riding on a fine line there, I think, for the the, the, the target demographic for it. Um, the other target demographic outside of kids is just people like me who are easily entertained by Pokemon things. And I had a great time. It's just very funny, like seeing Pikachu. And the, the, the most fun in this game is nothing to do with the human characters. They're like, whatever, boring. Like, Tim's a boring character. I don't really care <laughs> for him or whatever. But Pikachu talking to other Pokemon... And I put it out in my review. I think this is the most fun I've had watching Pokemon talk with other Pokemon. Then I met, um, the, that was exciting. It was much like playing, um, uh, Detective, oh, no, fucking did. Mystery Dungeon Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game, the original one, um, back when that came out in Game Boy Advance. And that was like all just like Pokemon interacting with each other. And it was so weird because you're so used to playing these games where there's always trainers and stuff like that. But there's segments of this game where Pikachu is by himself, um, away from Tim and you can, then you're just walking around, running around as Pikachu and interacting with other Pokemon and stuff. And it's just funny to see him talk to him and the way Pokemon will react and talk to him and, and, and stuff like that. And he gets bullied at some point and it's great. He gets locked up in jail. It's a whole fucking segment of the game where Pikachu gets arrested. It's so good. <laughs> he's behind bars. <laughs> he's doing hard time. <laughs> he's, he's a fucking criminal now. Uh, it's good shit. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the... There's, I don't know how many cases there is like four or five whatever it is but uh, they all like sort of intertwine into one larger case but they, they all sort of play out the same which is like the first part's like the introduction and you go like this other part and then by the end you gotta um you gotta be talking to these people and then you do the last part of the game where it's like you have to make your case and click the light thing but you can't do it wrong like and again this comes back to it being a kids game it doesn't matter when you get up to the last part of the game and you gotta like prove that you're accusing the correct person if you click all three of the wrong answers Pikachu will just make a, a remark and be like no I don't think that's quite right Tim and then it like knocks it out and then you just click through the rest like there's no like you can't fail there's no way to, to fail or be bad at this game it's just you're just playing through it and doing stuff like that 
Um, the and then every segment or every investigation would also introduce a new Pokemon that Pikachu can basically ride around, and they have different special abilities that you sort of help with the case the first one that's most seen in the trailers i guess is that i um, mean the first mission you get to ride this growl off growl around and the growl can um you hold the r button and it can um sniff on the ground so you use it to like sort of find these scents for tracking down stuff um in some of the later ones you got like bigger pokemon that can smash through things and you, you ride them around and smash through different objects to find stuff um and then the other funny part for this is just the fact that it came out after the release of the movie and it makes a joke about that right at the start of the game when you you first go to your um home and then your sister's like um i put a, the the gif in the review it's like she's like yeah i thought that movie was pretty good but how come mom and me didn't even show up in it because they just like i completely ignore the fact that tim in the games has a, a mother and a sister and then they um you know they're not characters in the movie and then um you know he just has some throwaway line in the game about like oh it's just because in the in this game they just like act like the events of the first game were sort of turned into the movie <laughs> and then like st- taking some creative liberties there but then the other funny thing is that the movie actually tied up a lot of plot elements that were left open in this so whereas in the movie they do the whole reveal about and where uh tim's dad is and all that sort of stuff that was left as a cliffhanger in the 3ds game um so that's still like continuing in this so then it's like okay like is this a game of thrones scenario where they were given like here's what we're planning to do like just you know figure the rest out from there or um so i found all that quite interesting and and weird to see how that played out but um yeah it was a lot of fun obviously you i feel like you know you either have to be a child or a, a pokemon um fan to to like this it's not it's not really for anyone else so seven and a half read my full review explosion over to comment if you'd like all right some shout outs two shout outs um we've got a review of uh let's do the wizards with the guns first so uh we'll put up a review for wizard with a gun um well, there's multiple wizards i guess if you want to play the game that way and cult but wizard with a gun review he gave it an eight out of ten, so Wizard with the Gun is a very tight package. It's magic being it's magic being how quickly and efficiently it has you effect- efficiently. So it has it has you into its systems and into the groove of turning back time to save the world. It achieves this with tight timed runs and its trim systems throughout, never leading you too far off the path to salvation. So Wizard with the Gun is a Devolver published game. It was announced quite some time ago, and then they they basically Devolver picked it up and I don't know if they check some of their PR and money into it and. Um, now it comes out. Yeah. Uh, it is a roguelike and then a base building game, um, sort of crammed into one. Did, w- do you play the demo as well, Ash? Or did I? Yeah, was... I played the demo. Yeah, so we, we've both played the demo. Um, it's a so it's a twin stick shooter with, as Will points out in his review, this same sort of art style that you know, called the Lamb and I don't, know, don't don't starve and whatever we're calling this sort of paper crafty art the dark paper paper crafty art style i don't know but um that sort of thing it's got that vibe about it uh but you go out on these runs uh you sort of collect elements bring them back to your base upgrade your weapons and your 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 weapons are guns in this game and the magic bullets you have in them and um and then you can build up your base the base he points out in a review that he didn't really care too much for the base building apart apart from the the core functionality of it to help with the gameplay and the rest of it sort of didn't engage with him but um said that the the gameplay going out and the twin stick shooting and stuff like that or the that sort of stuff he really liked so um you still keen to get into this maybe later this year when over some stuff dies down i mean it's on the wish list but you know Mm. we'll see how how the rest of the year pans out um yeah i think you know the the roguelike elements of it of going out doing run collect a bunch of resources come back uh is appealing mm. um but yeah it it seems like there's a lot there there's like time travel and other stuff involved in like the actual story and that kind of stuff so uh it's definitely on the list yeah yeah um another game put a review for up the previous week or the week before whatever it was i don't know published at pax time anyway time's a blur um we also did a review for Bilkins Folly. Gave it a 7 out of 10. So Bilkins Folly is a game that I could recommend to almost anyone in the mood for a treasure hunting adventure. It's tiny characters highlight the experience and make the longer than expected time sale apply with its puzzling 
Uh, while it's puzzling, is largely engaging if drawn back by more obtusely difficult puzzles and some technical hiccups that will be surely fixed in short order. Um, so this is the, um, I don't know, sort of throwback art style um, adventure game made in Tassie. Shout outs. Bloody shout outs. Shout out to Tazzy. Shout out, shout out to Webby Soft. Shout out to Tazzy. Tazzy, Tazzy lads. Tazzy lad. Gonna get, get in them, boys. Get them. You my brain turned off for Have you played it? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the game, it looks, I, I have it on my list as of things I'd like to, obviously, because it's made by Tazzy Dev. I so I would like to play it. Um, Although, of based on Will's review and some reading some other people's, I feel like I would just use a walkthrough because apparently a lot of us, some of the puzzles are really like old school throwback obtuse to the point of just being annoying. And I just cannot be fucked with any of that shit, to be honest. So like, I don't understand if that's like something you seek out in your video games, but like that really obtuse, like fucking combine the wood chip with the fucking random, you know, thing that makes no sense to solve a puzzle sort of stuff that is, it seems like some of the, the puzzles in this are. I'm like, no, nah, I don't I don't care for that. So not my cup of tea, but um in general I think the game looks cool. I like the art style and everything, so hit me with the quality critics roundup for Super Mario Brothers Wonder. So Mario Brothers Wonder got a 9.5 out of 10. It's fair to say that the quality critics are in love with the latest 2D Mario game, praising this entry's new look, sound, and feel. All were enraptured with the Wonder Flower sequences and appreciated the new badge system. The critics only had minor quibbles with the game, uh, with one wishing the boss fights were harder, another found the online functionality to feel like an add-on, while another just felt that the non wonder Flower segments were diminished by how great those were. So, yeah. It's a me. Uh, um, so I've been doesn't sound Mario like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Sounds very similar, but not quite like that. Um, I've been playing Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It's great. I I think it's very very good. Uh, as someone who apply, basically played catch up with the because Nintendo kept porting the Wii U 2D Mario's to Switch, mm-hmm. and I've been playing those over the last couple of years as they're bringing on them, bringing them across. And every single one of those, in my opinion, has been like fine. Like, I don't, like if I'd been playing those when they're on Wii U, I'd have been like, this is fine. Like, this is it's a Mario game. Like, you know, it's not bad because it's Mario. Like, it's solid, but. I'm um, not not exciting. Um, this is everything sort of so far that I would hope it would be, which is it's got really you know solid Mario platforming and whatever else. But just when it gets fucking weird, man, this game gets weird. Like, <laughs> like that's the I think it's the most exciting part. Like the just finding one of those little flowers, jumping into it, and hearing the and just like the whole world changing and being like, oh god, what's going to happen now? And like several times, I've just like some weird trippy shit start happening, and I think it. I, like, I really feel like by now, I'm like, I'm up to World 3, I think. I think by now, I'd just sort of be used to some of the weird stuff that can happen. But even last night, I was like in bed playing it. The shit happened. I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's like, it's so, <laughs> like, just there's some really wacky stuff they try, um, they, they throw out in doing this. Um, the online, too, I'm quite enjoying. Um, so they talked about, this is one thing that, so anyone who played, did the reviews, uh, prior to release they never got any of this stuff active so um, this is one of the things i'm like you're sort of missing out on some of the fun because the online as they talked about in the nintendo directs is if you have a network connection mode and you opt in in the background you're playing any level you've got uh you can see people running around playing the level at the same time as you um you can't interact with each mm-hmm. other really but you can Don't. so the cool thing is like if you die um you can like run into another player to um come back to life and and these other things but the funny, some of, it's also led to these like really um, fun interactions and like sort of those community communal moments you can have in these games. So there's um, like some of the mini mini games in this. There's somewhere it's like there these levels, and you got to find where hidden coins are in them. And if you find all five hidden coins, um, you'll get the wonder seed for that level. So like you're running around these levels and you can see everyone else like running and like trying to jump and see if there's hidden boxes in the air and stuff like that. And I was pl- playing this one last night where me and the other three people in that level at the time couldn't fucking like I could tell all of us were running around and must have got the other four and couldn't find it. And then the person who was uh, playing as Peach uh, figured out they had to like push this pipe across and then use it to like jump up on this thing. So they were standing there just spamming like a, you can spam like an emoji button like on the screen. So I was spamming it and just like you can hear her making a noise like Peach making a noise. So we, we all went down 
and they're all at the same time you could tell like clicked on and i went down there and like pushed this pipe across in our own versions of the games and got it and then i'll press like a button to like you know like clap clap thank you very much like i i think that stuff's like kind of cool like we're not in the game together but like and that we may not even speak the same fucking language you know like it could be japan and australia whatever but it's just like sort of funny like how stuff like that works together um mario then, brothers wonder strand game yeah yeah maybe uh, <laughs> the and then the other thing is like if you finish a level within roughly the same time so like if you jump onto the pole at the end of a level and a player is only like a couple seconds behind you and the game knows that it will actually hang you on the pole for an extra couple seconds so the player next will jump on too and i've had it happen once or twice now where it's uh, i've actually even though i'm not in the game with all these people where i've had four people all end up at the pole at the end we've all sort of finished the level together even though we weren't actually playing together but we helped each other along the way because the other thing you can do is if you hold down and press a button i can't remember x or something but you can drop uh these like cardboard cutouts and then with the cardboard cutouts you can you place those down in key areas and then if you die and you turn into ghost form if there's not another player around you can actually just swim over through the air as a ghost to one of those to revive yourself so like placing those down as key areas to help other players like if you're if you're ahead of everyone else in the level and you know that because you can see on the screen where they're at um everyone else who's in like your instance of that level at the time um and you get to a hard part you can be like fuck i just died like on this or nearly died on this i might drop like one of my little cut cutouts here and then the, the players coming through might hit it and you'll you'll see a thing down the bottom tell you that if a player used your uh, cut out to help them come back to life and you get like sort of heart points and your heart points will show like throughout grow it's sort of like not death stranding but it's a strand game is what i'm saying like it's yep. a, yeah <laughs> I just realized what I'm saying, guys, is this is a strand game. It wouldn't surprise me if Hideo Kojima actually worked on Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> Maybe it's got some weird shit went, in it. So. Yeah, it's like, guys, what if we have this like seed and it makes you do like trippy stuff? Yeah, it's like, like yes, we don't want to. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Kieran just completely took his headphones off and so that, that was enough to make him want to quit the podcast. <laughs> Mario and Hideo Kojima, and Kieran's done. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> he just put them on at the worst possible moment yeah. you know it's funny like because remember how i didn't love the movie the mario Bros. movie or whatever yes. um i rewatched it last night just because i was having so much fun playing the game i was like oh fuck i'm gonna put the mario movie on you know so stand by what i said it's pretty average but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, still... I hear that they don't talk much in this game who the characters yeah I don't know if they talk more or less than they usually do because it's just the typical amount of Mario games. Yahoo, they barely Yahoo, talk in Mario games. Yahoo, yeah. There's more talk. Maybe it's because you're general, lo- like though. looking for it, though. I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like because really, obviously with the the voice change, it's like people have been like maybe not. I, I was about to say in general, there's more talking voice acting in this game than there is any other Mario game because you got the Stop. fucking flowers <laughs> talking to you um, throughout yeah. the levels. Which do are you like funny, the flowers so. talking? Yeah, because it's funny because if you like figure out a secret, sometimes you'll be like you like pop through a like a thing and come out the other side in a secret area, and the flower will just be there next to like a secret seed or something. I'll be like, "Great job!" Or like you know, like the I don't know I, I I'm enjoying it. I think it's weird to have like actual voice in a Mario game. It takes you a second to like mm. get used to hearing an a, a English like an actual language voice yeah. in a Mario game. But um, but yeah, I'm en- I'm enjoying it. Um, all the, and another main thing, of course, with this game, as we went over a big part of the discussion at PAX, uh, for our demo and everything is of course the badges. Um, I like the badges too. I like the way that change it up. You can obviously like see how you, you may be at first, like, okay, I'm just going to leave the same one on and never change it. Mm. Cause I like this one, but I've found that I do change them up especially if i feel like a couple times i've just straight up like restarted the level so i could switch it because straight away i'm like this isn't going to work especially when you get not a lot of them but there are some key ones where it's like okay this level has a lot of like platforming stuff with the parachutes super handy this is a water level i've got one where i can if i've got this badge active i can press r and like swim faster through the water so why the fuck am i going to leave my parachute badge on that's completely useless in this level um this is a boss level there's lava I've got a thing that gives me a one use chance of surviving falling into lava. Like, why don't I put that on? You know what I mean? Like there are, yep. you definitely can change them up. And um, I, 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 although I went into the game and after the de- the demo time at PAX thinking, I probably won't 
haven't changed that much. I'll just leave on whatever one I like the most. I, ha- I have actually been changing them quite a lot. So, yeah. yeah, I was proven wrong on that one. So, yeah, I can definitely see the appeal like for like speed running element. It's like, mm. uh, what's the one that's going to get me through this level fastest? Is it yeah. worth the risk of me accidentally wasting time switching the badge? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and that kind of stuff. I think. That you wait, people be, people like, who are speed running it, they'll have all the badges unlocked and they'll just memorize. They'll be like, all right, to this level, and you'll see them just like A to enter level, and they'll just go like right, 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 down, da, 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 da. that's the one. Like they won't even, you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll just be and then there'll be runs with like the shittiest badge. Like I'll beat yeah. the game with this badge on. <laughs> Probably. Why not? And that kind of stuff. So um, and then the other thing I'll say is for people like in general, the levels aren't hard, which again, I don't think it's a bad thing. I I know that I think I was listening to kind of funny, and I heard Tim Gettys say something along the lines of like he's like i like the game but uh, i don't know like you know in the world where we've got celeste and all these things it's hard to think that all these games that are more that were inspired by mario were are now better than it i think the thing is though although older mario games were harder mario has always been a, a franchise that is targeted at families and kids so i don't think that mario games not ne- trying to be as hard as something like a celeste is a bad thing in my mind with that said the game does have optional a lot of optional hard levels. So I, I, I think the challenge is here if you want to do it. There is a secret world mm-hmm. where I was tried to play one of the levels last night and just playing it on the Switch, my fucking hand started to hurt by trying to do all the wall jumping. And I was like, no, thank you. If I'm going to attempt this, this is a docked using the pro controller scenario because I just, I just like my hand is getting fucking sore trying to do this. And then some of the, even some of the badge challenges can get quite, hard as well like all the levels have star ratings to tell you if they're like on the on a difficulty scale so yeah. yes the core difficulty isn't super hard it's meant for families to play together and stuff but if you like a challenge in the platformer it is there if you want to seek it out so yeah it sounds like some of the optional ones are, can be quite difficult yeah lots of wall jumping one square platforms to jump on you know like that there is there is challenge here for, for people who want it if you want yeah. 100 percent the game and get all the the seeds and whatever else so um very beautiful game too um very very like obviously art style like look i played it both in my hands and on my tv um for a few hours between both now and um it, it, no matter where you're playing it i think the game looks great i like the art style too all these complaints about that so i don't know what the fuck the problem is get out of here no it looks great um looks great. yeah it's interesting i was i think it was uh daniel vukovic which is a review over at Vuk's, like breaking down like all the changes kind of the animation and like how mario can now throw fireballs with both hands like he was yeah, never yeah. able to do that before pew, 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 pew. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. kind of stuff it's like very weird so uh, but there's yeah. lots of little animations i appreciate too that people i've seen yeah. people complain about like they're just too purists like there's like fun stuff now like mario ju- f- goes into a fucking um he'll go sideways into a um into a fucking pipe and he, he like his hat falls off as he goes and you see his hand like put, like reach out and grab it and stuff like there's a lot mm. there's, i just feel like there's a lot more like lively animations like and stuff, stuff. yeah fun stuff and mixed with the fact he's firing fireballs or two things the the fucking elephant trunk is swaying in the air and you can you can press a button to make it fucking attack with it like yeah i don't know like there's lots of yeah. there's lots of fun stuff here i, I think know. the other thing like people really like the feel of this one like just the the floatiness the platforming, and that kind of yeah, it's, not, it's, the pla- actual platforming yeah, it's, 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 i feel like it's they it's there are some people like it who don't like the floatiness of mario platforming and that's fine that's like if then mario's not really for you but in the t- in the realm of like mario platforming this this feels really like good mario platforming mm-hmm. like i think so um yeah really enjoying it. King, obviously i'm gonna keep playing it i'm having a great time so so on open critic it's currently got i think a 92 and one minute critic has got like a similar score do you mm. think this is a game of the year contender oh yeah yeah, yeah. i think this will be in a game of the year contender i i can i can fully understand the thing is that people don't understand i guess well some people seem to miss it's not that the ga- i don't think the game's getting rave reviews because and i i do agree that sometimes nintendo games and mario games get this whole like all right extra it gets point. the rub <laughs> yeah it gets it gets Just like nintendo playstation rub. exclusives get a little bit of a yeah, like I, I, I do see that, but there is a simplistic, straight up old school gamer, whatever you want to call it, gamer joy 
to a good fucking platformer, man. You know what I mean? Like, mm. just let's just go back to it. I'm just playing a good old fucking platformer. And this is that, you know, like this has levels where it seems like a, a typical platformer. And next second, you jump into a fucking seed and next you're fucking flying through the air. You know, like, I don't know what <laughs> it's, 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 there's just so much new and old combined here that if, like, I don't know, like, this is this is one of those things where it's just, it's just pure joy, right? We've spent a lot of these, uh, we've spent a lot of this episode talking about these massive, like big technical story based games like Spider Man and Assassin's Creed and whatever the fuck else you know like what I mean like and th- now it's just mm. like oh right, here here we're just back to joy here we're just back to it's old school joy of a Mario game so I I, I think it has game of the year potential for a lot of places I don't think it's gonna win like I don't think this has a no, chance you, of but it'll be in the sixth is what you like uh, at the game awards yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised because you got to remember. You got to remember. Let's let's put it back. You got to remember those choices. Um, like those of like those six are going to be chosen by a lot of people w- that will fucking love this game, right? Uh, yeah, I th- I think it's interesting because obviously it's it's like obviously a family game. Uh, you know, I feel like maybe the score has been a bit boosted because. It's being played by people who love. It's being reviewed by people who love Mario. You know. Yeah, but I mean, like at, at like, the end of the day, if, if you're like, oh, the scores are boosted to a nine, what is it? A eight? You know. Yeah. Like, like in what there's in there's no world in which this game's been like this is a fucking being boosted out of like a six to a fucking nine. You know what I mean? Like it's not. But the <laughs> yeah. thing is, I don't think you can even say that, right? Because I think Spider Man. Only people who like Spider Man are going to be playing Spider Man. Yeah. Like, I don't think, I don't think you can quite say that. Maybe it works for stuff like Baldur's Gate and stuff because I don't like. I think a lot of people will be giving that game a try, even if they. But don't who doesn't like, like Mario? Sega kids. Other than you, <laughs> people who prefer Sonic. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Any play? Body played Sonic Superstars? Nope. Did not. I saw that Brickman. Let's be honest, right? The only reason, <laughs> let's be honest. The only reason that Dylan played Mario is because he got his rog confused with the Switch, and then just went, "Oh fuck it, I'll keep playing." I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually really weird because the game I've been playing on my rog this week, which I'll probably have a review up for next week, is the Gargoyles Remastered. I started playing on my 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 rog. They put out a- <laughs> really. What the fuck? Turns out, Dylan. I can't Gargoyle fans. Hey, it's Triple A. I love Gargoyles. Gargoyles was amazing. You can. I saw your news story this week about the live action TV series. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, I had to fucking post that news story. Yeah. I love Gargoyles. Gargoyles is fucking fantastic, man. What a great show. Yeah. I've I've played four video games this week and Super Mario. No, five. And Super Mario Bros. is definitely the Triple A of the the, the bunch. (laughs) The other four? No. And I haven't touched Spider Man yet. Sorry to say. Yeah. But but to be fair, to be fair, I knew coming into this episode, you two would have smashed Spider Man, and I was like, I'm just going to play some Mario. Right. Oh, that's good. Okay. You know. Fair enough excuse. Yeah. It's, it's it's for balance. Balance. It's you balance could have it. probably put an hour into Spider Man and experience like the first. I was going to do it last night, but here's what happened. There was a massive thunderstorm, which is apparently continuing to the day, and I don't mind it because it's not okay. It went on for hours, and I just left the blind. Like I was playing, I was laying on the couch just playing Mario, and it was like six, seven o'clock. And then I was like, man, maybe I'll get up and I'll go play Spider Man, right? Yeah. Next second, I was like, fuck this thunder, just laying here, like it's kind of cool, just watching it in the distance and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, (laughs) you know what I'll do? Let's just put on the Mario movie. And then I'll watch a Mario movie and just watch the thunder Mario movie. Sorry, you missed that part. You took the you took your headphones out. I forgot. Yeah. You watched yeah, the Mario. Mario movie. No, I heard you watched the Mario movie. I didn't realize it now. Now it you chose the Mario movie you over chose, playing yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, you chose the Mario movie over playing Spider-Man Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the bit you'll put on social media this week. <laughs> well, look, I don't choose it. AI does that. So, <laughs> oh well. Wow. I mean, you can sort. Of, you have a little bit of. I, I have a bit of choice. control. I was like, we, if we talk about Arcade Catch between the questions in a couple of weeks, I'm going to tell you, I've, I've decided what AI tools are quite handy and which ones I've drawn the line at. <laughs> <laughs> like, as, as someone who's been openly, AI is cool until it reaches this stage where it's like stealing people's jobs. So it comes with. 
I've certain some, jobs. I've, yeah, certain jobs. Like, I've, I've, yeah, I've found some good uses so far. And yeah, the clips have been quite handy. So anyway, that'll do it for this week's episode of Arcade Couch. Whether you're flipping or Yahoo one, I hope it's been a good time for you this week. A big week. A big week for video games. And it keeps on trucking as we head towards November. Game big week year, for video awards. gamers, except if you've got only an Xbox. What about Forza? What about Forza, guys? That was, no, that was weeks. Kieran, we're not going to talk about old news that came out weeks yeah. ago. We're Assassin's not, yeah. Creed was weeks ago. We can't. We yeah. Been to, yeah, but, yeah, but we, on, had fre- Kieran, we had fresh we takes on it. it. We had fresh takes yeah. on it. You know, fresh takes. You got fresh takes <laughs> on Forza? No, you haven't played it either, have you? You're fucking. Yeah, that's right. Shut no. up. No. Let's say any comments, questions, concerns you have had about this week's episode or your thoughts about anything, including Ash's whole day to Perth and how you feel about him not playing um, more stuff other than Marvel Snap. Uh, you do that on our Discord, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. Let us know what you think he should have done with his one-year-old. Um, he should have played Marvel Snap with the one-year-old. He should have taught it how nephew. to podcast. Sorry, nephew. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Ash had a child. While away. <laughs> Pop down a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what a long time you're like was he gone for two weeks or was he gone for two years who's to say who's to say tweet at us no z to this explosion.com slash twitter takes you to your x page and then uh do all the things if you want to donate to this way to the the, the place the website do all the things explosion.com slash support takes you to our Kofi page and we'll see you here same time same catch next week goodbye before Thank i say you, anything uh, else. Dan Kojima did that outro <laughs>